in real science, the kind of science that geniuses like Sherlock Holmes subscribe to. So I'm talking about real science, so I'm not talking about CERN, and I'm not talking about much of what is going on in the higher levels of universities these days. In real science, a hypothesis, or to be exactly correct, an hypothesis, is a f slightly more scientific form of conjecture or guessing. It's an educated guess. And by the rigors of proper science, if an hypothesis, or I'll just say, if a hypothesis is proven wrong when the experiment is done or when one, any one of the experiments are done that are testing it, that hypothesis is anathema. It is to be tossed out like a dirty, stinky, rotten fish that's been in the free fridge for too long, okay? But some hypotheses were born under a lucky star. Some hypotheses are foundational to belief in a spherical Earth. And one of these golden children among hypotheses, these untouchable heroes of science, is gravity. Newton's gravity, not the gravity that everybody knows that down is down and you drop something goes down. No, Newton's gravity that forms great balls in space and great balls of fire and big bangs and all these other nonsensical things like gravitons and such and whatever CERN says they're doing and all that kind of stuff is built off of the gravitational theory. So they came up with the Cavendish experiment to find the gravitational constant. But as I mentioned in another video, each time they measure the gravitational constant, it has an error range, not enough um, there's no overlap, or there's little overlap between two experiments. You have to cherry pick, and if you look at all the experiments together, the errors don't overlap. So what's that tell you? That gravity, as far as it's con as far as uh, it's concerned with Newton, should be tossed out. Now, somehow they just decide on a gravitational constant and move on. Okay, well, fantastic. The next problem they encountered, the ellipticals, they developed calculus to explain it. Fantastic. Great. You know, fine. Go ahead and do that. But then along comes the ether, and they predict what it should be, and it's not at all that way. And then they try to explain it, and they can't. And then they had a real problem. It was a real stumbling block. And along came the celebrity scientist Albert Einstein, a patent clerk who had never filed a patent in his life, a man who didn't invent anything but BS, invented the famous E equals MC squared. You can tell me he's a genius a thousand times. I've heard it 10,000 times or more, but I don't believe it because his theory was never proven. And I maintained that uh, for a while. And then uh, along came this, um, uh, well, it wasn't anything small. It's something that they were trying to do for a long time. They um, invented a way that they could prove his theory. And it involves building a machine that's billions of dollars that does something that is unobservable, unrepeatable. It's unreproducible. And they tell you that Einstein was proven right because gravitational waves were found. Oh yeah, really? So you build a multi-billion dollar instrument, two of them in fact, and you do this for the sole purpose of discovering gravitational waves to prove that Einstein's correct and that you can keep this hoax going about gravity being the only force that pulls and doesn't push and has no particles, it has no uh, detectable wave energy, so it's not a particle, it's not a wave, it's got no medium, there's no mechanism of action, there's no equal and opposite reaction. Uh, it's uh, All the forces in nature are measurable, except gravity is such of a weak force, it's, it's indiscernible. You can't discern between that and buoyancy effects. Now, obviously buoyancy requires there to be an up and a down which we have always had. So there's no discovery with gravity. 
Um, the acceleration in air of a solid object of 9.8 meters per second squared was known long before Newton came along, okay? So let's hear what they have to say about gravity. Oh my galaxy, we found gravitational waves! Oh my galaxy, that tells you a lot. Ah! Hey stargazers, Julia here for D News. A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Story time, children, gather around. I'm gonna tell you about science. And guess what? It's gonna be things that are too far away to observe, too long ago in the past to discern, and or too small to be visible. It's always something that's too long ago, it's either too big, too far away, or too small, so that you have to take our word for it because science, and shut up and don't question it. Oh, and you want, you, you want our data to be repeatable and reproducible? Well, you're gonna have to build a multi-billion dollar instrument and we're not going to repeat these experiments or reproduce them for you anyway. So collided in a fateful swirling that. waltz. Just like when you toss a rock into a pond and the kerplunk creates ripples on the surface of the water. I've thrown a rock into a puddle and I have seen ripples come out of it. That is an experiment that I can repeat and that somebody else independent of me can reproduce. So yeah, if it's just like that, then I'll go along with it, but what is this CGI thing you're showing me? Is it observable like a rock in water? This collision sent ripples through the fabric of space-time. The theoretical fabric of space-time. And we finally detected one of these ripples, or as researchers call them, gravitational waves. We've been looking for these kinds of waves for a long time. Albert Einstein first proposed their existence in his theory of relativity over a hundred years ago. Nice. Did you like it? Um, no. Well, so we've been searching for them ever since. So we've been searching for them ever since. So we've been searching for them ever since. Well, isn't that special and convenient? Hmm. Until now. Today, LIGO, or the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, announced that they found the galactic Kerplunk by detecting or hearing one of the ripples. Shh, listen. So it's easy to detect with the machine that you built to detect it, to prove the theory that was necessary to exist, which is actually a hypothesis, to continue the belief in gravity, um, it's getting pretty complicated. Surely the evidence you present will be simple and straightforward, not just some piece of paper with numbers on it, or some crappy sound file that's meaningless, or like a thumbnail picture or something. Well, I'm sure that with all that money at stake, the evidence will be very, very convincing and probably awesome sounding. Plunk by detecting or hearing one of the ripples. Shh, listen. by detecting or hearing one of the ripples. Shh, listen. Ah, oh, music to my ears. The oh signal. yeah, that was definitive, that was. Uh-huh, music to your ears, sure. It was seen on September 14th and last year. this was year. how long ago? Um, so we can reproduce this um, event and measure and make sure our instruments are working the way that you said they are. Cataclysmic event that caused it happened nearly 1.3 billion years ago when two black holes collided. While two black holes colliding has been theorized, it hasn't been observed before. The theorized it hasn't been observed before. The theorized it hasn't been observed before. The theory goes that two black holes will circle each other and lose energy that's released as gravitational. The theory goes before the CGI shows how everyone knows what science says today. Repeat that three times to break the spell of scientism. Oh, waves. Over time, they will get closer and closer over the course of a few billion years, then finally collide in a fraction of a second. This really I don't have one of your fancy gravitational wave detectors or whatever you call them. Frankly, I don't really believe in those things. a large amount of mass as energy in the form of gravitational waves. In this case, the waves. In this case, the black holes were about 30 times the mass of our sun and were moving at half the speed of light in that last fraction of a second. This huge <laughs> 
and it's going off red and pegged. Huge impact sent a shockwave of gravitational waves or ripples in space-time through the universe at the speed of light. But as massive as that collision was, the reverberations that reached us were tiny, like one one thousandth the diameter of a proton. According to one one thousandth the diameter of a proton. According. Does anybody besides me see what they're doing here? Everything that they do is super tiny. You can't see it. It happened from something so long ago. You'll never know if you ever can observe it again. And it is something that is so far away that you can't get there and reproduce it. And the super special specific machine that they built to detect this super, super duper tiny, tiny wave is so expensive that you can't build one. But even though the super duper duper tiny wave from the super long ago thing, it's a, it, it's so tiny, but then it's so big and important that you got to spend billions of dollars in funding more and more research into it. And it never ends. They just want to upgrade. According to David Wrightsey, the executive director of LIGO. So the guy who makes his living off of running the machine to detect these gravitational what? waves is going to say what? that he detected these gravitational waves. I was able to detect such a tiny wiggle by using two labs, one in Livingston, Louisiana, and one in Hanford, Washington. The labs use massive and precise lasers, like 2.5 mile long laser beams that can read 10,000 times smaller than a proton. These lasers were seen in space time would change the timing of when the lasers reach their destination. And that's just what happened on that fateful day. The same wiggle sh Fateful day, no, you could see it coming. It was planned all along. They just made up results to justify the calculations and predictions they had already made. They built this bullshit machine to spit out some sound file or some numbers on a piece of paper or on a computer screen. And these numbers, they tell you, oh, you're right. Incredible, these wiggles matched up to what supercomputer models of gravitational waves had already predicted, which were based off of the calculations from Einstein's theory of relativity. So it's the real deal. We now have solid um, evidence of gravitational waves and evidence of bi um, no. binary black holes. And this discovery pro um, no. proves Einstein's theory, finally. We've been searching for that again. It's not important. Theory, finally. Um, no. Finally. We've been seeing only. We've been guys for a guys for a century. Oh, yeah. For a century, a century, century. We're guys for a century. It's not important. Think for these guys for a century. Rumors have. It. Oh hell! What does that matter? Rumors have it that. Rumors. Yeah, subjective. You'll dismiss flat Earth experiments that are repeatable and reproducible without even looking at them. Yet, you'll search for a century and accept the first report that has all kinds of problems with it because it supports your things that aren't real, are not scientific, and are of no importance. You don't go around in, in science, real science looking for whatever will support your preconceived notions. Not it's primary school stuff. How can you not know that? But that this discovery could be the shortlist for a Nobel Prize. Why? Well, oh, hell, what does that matter? It wouldn't make any difference. You go around the sun if you went around the moon or round and round the garden like a teddy bear. It wouldn't make any difference. Researchers are hailing that the discovery could be. All that matters to me is the work. Discovery could be as exciting as when we discovered x-rays. Oh, hell, what does that matter? So good science is what excites you. Oh, just, wow, wow, guys. It has opened a new window onto the universe. Studying and tricking gravitational waves will help us better understand black holes, supernovas, other really large space events, and even possibly... Ordinary people fill their heads with all kinds of rubbish. And that makes it hard to get at the stuff that matters. Do you see? The fundamental laws of the universe. We'll learn so much more more about the universe and how it works as LIGO upgrades their equipment to become more and more sensitive. And in a few decades... Do you see? The European Space Agency plans to launch a space-based gravitational wave detector. So hopefully more gravi... It wouldn't make any difference. All that matters to me is the work. Without that, my brain rots. More gravitational waves will be detected. If you want to learn more... Put that in your blog. Or better still, stop inflicting your opinions on the world. A 
amazing discovery, check out the study published in the journal Physical Review Letters. Wow, just wow. Listen, this is my hard drive and it only makes sense to put things in there that are useful, really useful. Oh guys, so much incredible science happening right now in our lifetime. Einstein would be so proud. Look, it doesn't matter to me who's prime minister or no, no. who's sleeping with who. Out. If gravitational waves seem like... Oh, yeah. God, that again. It's not important. Not like a familiar concept, it's because we've talked about them before on D News. A telescope called Bicep... But if I ever did, I've deleted it. Bicep 2 is looking for evidence of gravitational waves of a different kind. From the... Oh, hell! Most cataclysmic... What does that matter? ...event of all time, the Big Bang. To learn more about that, check out... Oh, the God, that again. Oh, don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons and keep coming back to D News with... <laughs> It's primary school stuff. How can you not know that? We've got new episodes every day of the week. Or better still, stop inflicting your opinions on the world.